Thank you, Louise. Have you been asked this question? Um, are you a Hong Konger or are you a Chinese or a hybrid? It's, for me, it's always a confusing question. What does it mean to be Hong Kong? What does it mean to be Chinese? Um, what is the difference? There are a lot of difference, but what are you trying to ask? Have you been um, asked by a foreigner to describe what Hong Kong people are like? Or what is the Hong Kong spirit? Is there a widely accepted concept of Hong Kong spirit? So all these questions revolve around um, one theme, uh, the Hong Konger identity. And in my presentation, I'll focus on the question, um, how do post-1997 films interact with this topic and how this topic has evolved into um, in recent years? Um, this is Joe from Shanghai, and let's get started. Uh, first, we need to discuss the peculiar feature of Hong Kong decolonization process. Um, so, this Hong Kong's decolonization involved reclaiming native cultural traditions. Well, the British government actually never intervened in the first place. And we actually preserve our own culture, we have our own languages still in use, and we have, have our own festivals, style of living, nothing is interrupted. So Chinese-ness has never disappeared um, on a large scale. But that doesn't mean it's happy and harmonious for everybody. Um, actually, Hong Kong people are very dissatisfied with the British government. Um, this dissatisfaction um, 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 culminated in the 1967 riot. Um, and it is a crucial event that causes the first wave of emigration in Hong Kong and distrust for both Chinese and British government and also a yearning for localist Hong Konger identity. And despite all the problems in the colonial period um, before 90, 1997, um, especially after the uh, June 4th incident in um, 1989 um, and as um, 1997 years, um, a capital Capitalist, economic success, and modernity and globalness of Hong Kong are actually involved in the handover related discussions. And um, these kind of success are heavily associated with the British government. So, um, as we see, um, the fear for Chinese government actually um, causes us to um, kind of think about, imagine that, okay, the British people are actually doing pretty well. Um, so, um, the um, one movie represents the um, sentiment of 1997 pretty well. It is um, the movie Made in Hong Kong by Chan Guo. Um, so um, it is a young protagonist, which is a gangster, um, but he also has a very limited control of his fate. Um, he's off, um, ordered to kill, and he is um, under a triad boss. Um, so although he has moderate success, but um, he cannot, do not have the agency to control his fate. And although he has shown kindness and concern for um, the um, female protagonist that, she, um, that he loves, but um, ultimately, um, he, just like um, Hong Kong people's subjectivity, could never flourish and blossom. And um, just like the end of the movie, um, they all died. They cannot pass through the, <coughs> the threshold of um, 1997. So in the end of the story, we passively live through the handover. And the horse continues to run, um, and the dance continues to jump and time continu continues to progress after 1997. Um, but our confusion in identity is never resolved. Um, the Infernal Affair is often referred to as a political allegory that describes this ambivalence, this almost schizophrenic sentiment. Um, Andy Lau is an undercover gangster in the police force um, for decades and but now he has um, a chance to choose to become a good person or not. Um, that um, the past, our memories are actually alterable, that he can, um, that as um, time progresses, as, um, as, and as a series of events continues to unfold, um, he is forced to decide um, which boss to serve, just like Hong Kongers, which boss to serve, the British um, or the Chinese government. And, if post-colonialism is about determination and a collective resistance, um, Hong Kong's case is a case of reluctance and incoherence. Um, just like Andy Lau, 
um, whichever way he choose. Um, if we choose to become a Chinese or not, um, we need to erase some of our past and deceive ourselves. And in the end, this kind of identity creation um, will eventually fail, just like Andy Lau went crazy in um, internal affairs third in In 2007, um, the Queen's Pier is dismantled because of the land reclamation project in Central. Um, as part of synthesization, um, China tried to create its version of um, successful Hong Kong by investing on new development projects and simultaneously erasing the symbol of colonial government. Um, but the Chinese developmentalism met solid resistance from youngsters, especially those born in the 80s and they organized a large-scale um, protest against this um, whole project. So um, in this um, protest, um, they tend to resort to the rationale of preserving collective memories, and simultaneously um, it feels some kind of nostalgia and romanticization of the colonial period, which um, supposedly they didn't experience that much and they do not have a solid understanding of um, contemporary understanding, um, contemporary history, um, if you can see what I've said before, the um, 1967 riot. So without enough communication with the public, since synthesization retards our identification with Chinese government and Chineseness as a whole, um, this is point one. And point two is that our identity are actually kind of provisional and um, it is not actually adequately backed by um, um, historical fact. Um, so now, um, let's think about this question again. When we're asked whether we're Hong Kong Chinese, Chinese Hong Kong, Hong Konger, or Hong Konger or Chinese, um, so why does this question sound kind of unnatural to us? Um, for me, at least is because um, I kind of feel an emptiness of Hong Kong identity that um, Hong Konger seem to become a flow and um, free floating signifier that sometimes is associated with Britishness with British colonial period sometimes is associated with anti Chineseness sometimes it is associated with um, Hong Kong um, popular culture Hong Kong um, local um, cultural um, attributes um, is never a solitary, a unified um, word that uh, that is that whose meaning is agreed upon. So the anti-Chinese sentiment um, continues to grow, and if you are my age, you know this. Um, starting from, for example, the um, highway. Um, high-speed railway contro controversy starting from 2008 till now and the controversy, especially the controversy of national education at universal suffrage in 2012 and 2014. Um, so there's a movie that engaged the discussion of these um, events. Um, the movie 10 years. Um, it um, shows a very pessimistic outlook for Hong Kong, a kind of crazy colonization by the Chinese, that there are growing numbers of immigrants from mainland China, then there are growing political apathies, the disappearance of local languages, the blatant disregard for law and justices, and complete disappearance of um, Hong Kong cultural features. So, 10 years, does speak out the contemporary concern, especially um, its release in 2015, right after Umbrella Revolution, and it shows a deep distress about um, growing influence of Chinese government. But it doesn't show an antagonism, but rather it shows an um, express a kind of sense of powerlessness. There's there's an anger towards the unavoidable assimilation. Um, other movies like um, The Red Van, the, a cult movie, um, shows a lot of local elements ranging from uh, iconic buildings um, to foul languages. Um, and also with limited budgets, um, 
different movie producers try to explore on this topic to incorporate um, local elements um, in movies to enjoy um, the produced movie, especially for the entertainment of Hong Kong people. But does this movie become a wider symbol of Hong Kong locality? Um, just like Stephen Chow, just like Sam Hui's songs, and other big stars in the 80s. Um, in my opinion, it's a no. Um, it avoids a larger discussion on Hong Kong people's subjectivity, how Hong Kong people actually think. And um, kind of, it's difficult to find one attitude that seems to resonate widely um, across society. And more importantly, um, more and more, um, locality, identity, and colonial history is no longer something that concerns us. It's no longer the, the historical fact, um, our roots, where we're from, where we belong, and where will we go, um, is less and less something we urgently call for. Um, Someone in the back is watching Hong Kong movie. Uh, so back to the discussion. Um, why is it less and less relevant? Um, because um, there are theorists that said um, that ask, um, is there any room for national identity in a increasingly globalized world? So um, we're living in more and more complicated society. A, a cultural supermarket, if you will, and nationality is become less and less, becoming a less and less relevant constituent of our personal identity. And some argue that um, Hong Kong is caught up in the globalization of Chinese culture or Chinese popular culture. Um, for example, um, well, the cultural products in China, the apps, um, the social media stars, um, the TV shows, um, these things are being increasingly appreciated in Hong Kong. And, um, these, and the pop popularity of these things soften our perceived differences um, between um, Hong Kong and mainland Chinese people. And so it also shows that um, we're not only struggling within a Chinese um, visa being um, Hong Kong people paradigm, but also um, we Hong Kong as Hong Kongers as people are exploring our interests in a extensively globalized world, um, which I think you'll we'll discuss in the next tutorial: Japanese Korean culture. And the second thing is that support for Hong Kong public culture, Hong Kong local culture, is not necessarily anti-Chinese, and vice versa. And as um, the cultural identity is being in Hong Kong is being more and more diversified, um, we are um, the debate about our national identity become less and less relevant. And finally, um, again, I'm sorry that I cannot be there in the tutorial. Um, but I have prepared a interview with two Hong Kong youth students that is also here in Shanghai um, concerning this topic, but it is in Cantonese. Um, so if you're interested, you can try to listen to that. Um, thank you.